Key moves are being made in Audi's journey to the F1 grid, even though its team still isn't going to be called Audi for a couple more years. The brand new Audi engine project is being developed in parallel with a gradual takeover of Sauber with a clear goal, be competitive from the start in 2026 and fight for wins within three years of entering. Audi bought a minority stake in Sauber at the start of 2023, is expected to own half the team this year, then be the majority shareholder by the start of 2025. And that is still the plan, despite the speculation that arose late in 2023, suggesting Audi might pull the plug on the whole thing before ever getting onto the grid. The Sauber side denied this at the time, and after more than 100 days in charge, the verbal blockade on Audi's new CEO was lifted in December too, and he has since confirmed the F1 project continues as planned. There's unlikely to be any more concrete information from Audi for a little longer on where F1's exciting new manufacturer is at and what it has planned for the team it's buying. But we're already able to start piecing together the reality of what's going on with this program, including the interim years it will have with yet another new identity as Stake F1 team, which we'll explain later. Sauer CEO Andreas Seidel, who will head up Audi's F1 team when it finally materialises in full, had a very busy first year after moving across from McLaren. Part of his remit was to feed back to Audi exactly what it had signed up for. This will have fed into any kind of scrutiny or review of its commitment, which is not as dramatic as it was made to sound at one stage last year. Seidel's observations, suggestions and even demands of what Sauber needs coincided with the departure of the Audi and Volkswagen Group CEOs who had been key drivers of the F1 program. That inevitably led to the new people in charge wanting to get a grasp of the scale of the F1 commitment, especially at a tricky time for the Volkswagen Group overall. But the bottom line seemed to be that there was a need for Audi to invest more in Sauber before 2026. The terms agreed between Sauber and Audi for the sale effectively puts a bigger onus on the existing majority shareholder, which is basically Finn Rousing, until Audi assumes most control. Audi is still investing, there's just a controlled spend and reduced responsibility for now. Team representative Alessandro Aluni Bravi says the investment so far is all according to the plan mapped out by Audi and Sauber, but there's an ongoing effort to get more out of Audi before 2025 and 2026. The reality of the team probably wouldn't surprise F1 regulars versus their expectation. It has good facilities, including what new technical director James Key calls a legendary wind tunnel and good personnel. But it is understaffed relative to the teams Audi wants to compete with in the end and could use some technological upgrades in Hinville and Trackside. And Audi probably did slightly underestimate what the chassis and team side of the equation would require to be a top team by 2026. That, combined with changes in circumstances like the team we now know as Stake being among those to get the biggest bonus in extra capital expenditure allowance from this year, means in order to make the most of the next two years, more can and needs to be invested than was outlined in the initial purchase agreement. Essentially, Audi needs to dig into its pockets a little bit more, and it's not the work of a moment to get the relevant boards to sign off on that especially as this would have been disrupted by the board level changes. So a different Audi CEO to the one who started all of this is not expected to derail the bid, it's just probably delayed Sauber getting access to any extra resource. Between staff recruitment and infrastructure development for the F1 team and building an engine at the same time, it seems highly likely that entering F1 is turning out to be, or will eventually become, more expensive than Audi anticipated. That sounds like a familiar story for a new manufacturer, but at least the cost cap and development restrictions should mean that spending cannot snowball like it would have done in the past. Before we get too hung up on the team side, it's worth catching up on the monster project ticking away in the background while the majority of us have been focused on the F1 seasons themselves. Audi isn't just buying a team. It's F1's big new addition for the 2026 engine rules and is playing catch up against established manufacturers. By signing off on the F1 project in 2022, Audi gave itself a healthy three and a half years to prepare its engine facility and build a competitive power unit. Concessions for new manufacturers also meant more money to spend than those already competing. In 2023, for example, Audi was allowed to spend $105 million. It started the project already in 2022 before the engine spending cap was introduced, so money has already been spent on top of that. Another $105 million is permitted this year and $100 million in 2025. This cost comes on top of what will doubtless be tens of millions spent on infrastructure. The Neuberg facility where Audi's Dakar, Formula E, DTM and Le Mans cars have been built since 2014 has been expanded, the simulator updated and an all new 3,000 square metre building housing test benches should be completed early this year. More than 200 new employees have been recruited alongside existing Audi personnel and the team had grown to 300 strong by the end of 2023. Most of the technical infrastructure was put in place last year too. 
Single cylinder dyno testing has been conducted since the end of 2022, with a full power unit hoped to be on the dyno before 2023 ended. It's not clear whether that target was met, but Audi has also stated its ambition of having a test engine ready to run in the mule car in 2025. Judging its progress is impossible given the only snippets of 2026 work that circulate the paddock are based on hearsay, and there is plenty of time for any supposed early pecking order for the new regulations to change. All that can be said of Audi on the engine side is that it seems to have given itself the best chance of having a strong foundation. Now, back to the race team that we'll be calling Stake for the next couple of years, which Aluni Bravi says cannot be treated as transition years. He knows that 2024 and 2025 are critical to laying the right foundation and Audi is already aware of this too. It's no small task turning a lower midfield entry into a team that can deliver on Audi's bold and probably slightly foolish public target of being very competitive within three years of entering F1. Aluni Bravi admits that finishing in the bottom places of the championship as the team fell from 6th in 2022 to 9th in 2023 shows there is much that needs to improve. If stake is getting or will get the extra Audi push it needs to make more progress in these intervening years, some outward proof of that would help convince the watching world. Relative silence about the project during the team's muzzling Alfa Romeo title sponsorship deal which ended last year did start to create the impression that this was treading water. Commercial sensitivities around Alfa meant very little was communicated about what Sauber and Audi were doing together. So when there were personnel changes at the very top of Audi and the VW Group, some alarm bells were ringing, which was undermining the reality behind the scenes. Stake is obviously not ready to become a top F1 team overnight, but Audi signalling its plans for 2026 gave it a good head start at making the race team as competitive as possible. It's been over a decade since the Sauber team even finished in the top half of the Constructors' Championship, although the rebuild since it was saved from financial ruin in the mid-2010s has at least restored it to midfield respectability. Kicking on from there has had repeated setbacks. The team declined in 2023, having started the new technical rules in 2022 on the front foot, and last year had a change of technical director with axe to McLaren man Key returning to Sauber, having left it several years ago, and already has identified several limitations that are being addressed for 2024. There also continued to be operational issues, even if the stupid mistakes that frustrated the team at their worst in 2021 have at least been reduced, and the process of building up the workforce in Switzerland as well as improving the facilities is ongoing, following a new simulator that was finished in 2021 and finally started being used at 100% in 2022. Some improvements have been made that the on-track results don't quite show yet. Development capacity has improved as a result of investment in the production and design departments at Hinville, and a new CFD configuration that improved its calculation capacity and output was invested in back in May and June. Going forward, more experienced race team personnel have been recruited, while new pit stop equipment will be available in 2024 too. With all these things in the works, it will be a worry if this team's first year of stake doesn't result in at least a small step forward. As you'll have worked out by now, Sauber has sold its team and chassis naming rights for the next two seasons as it waits to morph properly into its Audi era. The team will be known as Stake F1 Team except at the races where laws forbid such prominent gambling advertising and it will likely be called Kick F1 Team with the car named as the Kick Sauber C44. Seeing Sauber run in someone else's name is obviously nothing new given it has run under the Alfa Romeo name for the last few seasons. And given it tends to be the hallmark of a team in dire need of funding, cashing in on the naming rights might make it look like Audi isn't taking this seriously enough or that its team's in a strange holding pattern. But it is part of the same picture. It's all designed to support Sauber's interim seasons as it prepares for what's coming. Deals like this are important for funding all the improvements we've talked about in facilities, personnel and car development. And these seasons are much more significant than just treading water until 2026, especially after the backward step of last year. Although progress isn't linear in F1 and doesn't actually have to be for the end result to be very good, Audi probably expected a lot more than what's happened since it agreed the terms of its Sauber takeover. But if Audi was fully involved from the start, then things would look different already. So the only way to reverse the decline and accelerate Sauber's progress is for Audi to become as invested as possible long before a full identity change in 2026. It cannot just focus on setting up as an engine manufacturer and leave the likes of Seidel to right the Sauber ship with the resources that were agreed before Seidel even joined the project. The most encouraging thing is that Audi does seem to get that, which is a lot better than doubling down on the original terms of the purchase agreement and saying, this is what we all agreed, so this is what you get. It doesn't guarantee that this will succeed, 
but it hints at an avoidance of the mentality that could easily cripple a big, board-dependent F1 project like this one. Aluni Bravi has said that Audi's commitment is a long-term one and there is everything for Audi to be a player in F1 at the top level. That potential would be undermined if Audi fails to maximise the intervening two years. There is still time to do what's necessary, but it's already running out.